Hey guys, what's up? It's Jared Cuber. In this video, we have another unboxing from the cubicle. In here should be the new Royal Pure Minx from Calvin's Puzzle. So let's go ahead and open it up. I am really excited to get in this package. Um, the Royal Pure Minx is a puzzle that I have wanted to be mass produced for a long time, along with the Emperor Pure Minx. Hopefully that one will come out eventually, but for now, let's just get into to the, uh, the Royal Pure Minx. So it doesn't look like it came in the actual package, um, like the official packaging. But, as you can see, the puzzle is still here. So here we go, here is the puzzle. This is a Calvin's puzzle, like I said, and it was originally designed by Timur Edbetrov. Previously, all of the higher order Minx puzzles were produced by Mefferts. So we had the original mass-produced Master Pure Minx before it was made by Sheng Xiao. Uh, there was a Mefferts pillowed version, as you can see here. Um, and then, as well, there was the... Um, the Professor's Pure Minx, which was also made by Mefferts, and as you can see, that one was made by Timur as well. That's how his name is spelled. Um, so yeah, this these puzzles were really nice, but I can already tell that it's a different uh, type of plastic, they're different types of stickers, all that kind of stuff. It's just a different type of shape as well. So I think these puzzles have been modified a little bit from the original shape. Maybe that's uh, not quite the case, but I know that this puzzle uh, definitely looks exactly, pretty much exactly like the 3D printed version that Timur originally made. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the lineup now. We have, actually let's get the uh, regular pyraminx in here as well. We've got a three layer, four layer, five layer, and now a six layer Minx puzzle. If you don't count the tip, uh, because the tip doesn't really act as a layer, then you have two layer, three layer, four layer, and five layer. Um, but I consider this to be the um, five layer since, simply because it is called the Professor Pure Minx, and Professor's Cube originally was the name of the five by five. So uh, I consider this to be a five layer Minx puzzle. Which, would makes the, which makes this the six layer one. Now another thing with this puzzle that I know people are gonna ask is why it can't be flat faced, uh, why it has to be pillowed like this, and that's simply because of the cuts. It has to be like this. Uh, it's impossible to make it flat faced. Uh, it, just has to, it just has something to do with the geometry of how the pieces work. If it was flat faced, then the pieces would kind of overlap over each other and it wouldn't really move. So uh, yeah, it has to be pillowed, but enough talking. Let's actually get into the turning of this puzzle. Um, I've heard not super great things about it, but let's just go and try it out all right so the deepest cut seems to move pretty well okay this one uh, I think is gonna have the most trouble I can already tell the fourth layer here or maybe it's I don't know this one's pretty rough too. this third layer as you can see pieces are kind of separating as I'm moving it which is not a great sign uh, that kind of tells me that it might pop and then second layer okay the second layer moves fine and then the very outer tip. Of course, that is going to move just fine. So, um, yeah, you can definitely tell if not if everything's not lined up, it's most likely going to pop. But as you can tell, it's just like the pieces just kind of seem like they're moving around a lot. But this is neat, actually. I'm I'm liking this already. I'm just really hoping it's not that serious of an issue. But yeah, if we get a nice little spiral going all the way up like that. That looks pretty nice. Maybe like from the top like that, that's pretty cool. So apparently this puzzle has actually been in production for a couple years. So I guess this had to have been the best that they could make it, you know? Um, if it's if it's been in production for this amount of time, I'd imagine that they've um, they've refined the, the, the design as much as they can. Uh, but yeah, the Professor Pure Minx definitely moves a lot nicer. It's a bit louder as you can tell, but um, I'm a lot more... Um, comfortable turning this one pretty much more aggressively and I've never had a pop on this thing so yeah this one's pretty fun to solve it actually solves pretty similarly to how you would think a 5x5 would solve you solve the centers and then you reduce the edges and then you actually solve it like a Jinx Pyraminx um, so I'm assuming that's how this one is going to go as well we solve just these bigger centers here which actually have the same um, design shape as a Pyraminx and then we solve uh, these outer edges here and then we solve it like a Jinx Pyraminx so um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and scramble it up now, so let's go ahead and do that. This is pretty neat. Um, I do want to get the Emperor Pyraminx, which is the seven layer version. That one looks really, really cool as well. Um, I don't know if that one will ever be mass produced, but I just might get the uh, 3D printed version since I'm sure it'll be a higher quality than the uh, mass produced version anyway. So here is the scrambled puzzle. Looks very nice. Cool, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and solve this and come back and uh, talk a little bit more about how it solves. I don't think I'm gonna solve it on camera because I would expect it to take 
um, a little while. So uh, yeah, plus I haven't solved a high order minx puzzle in a while, so I've, I've got to kind of remember how to do it. Like I said, it is pretty much like reduction, but there's there's some differences between the two uh, methods. So yeah, I'll come back once I've solved it and uh, talk a little bit more about it. All right, so it's been about, I would say 45 minutes or so, and I finally got this thing solved. Um, yeah, it was a little bit tricky. It definitely wasn't completely intuitive. I kind of had to uh, do a bit of thinking to get through it, but in the end, it was relatively similar to solving the professor's pyraminx. So um, you solve the centers, and the centers are a little bit more tricky because of course, on this puzzle, you only have four pieces to solve, so the center is going pretty easily. There's uh, not much to do there, but um, on here, what uh, what I ended up with after uh, I was done solving the last two was one piece that needed to be switched with uh, the last two centers, so or two pieces actually that just needed to flip like that. Um, and so I just had to kind of figure out a little bit of a commutator, I guess, sort of to um, get that solved. Um, it took a little bit of thinking, but that was actually the the trickiest part right there was just to get that last center piece. In. Uh, once that was in, the rest went relatively smoothly. Uh, what I did to pair the edges is I paired up these three big segments here. So these are like the three um, wedges kind of of a five by five edge. And then you have all these like these four pieces in between that just kind of um, slide in. So you can just kind of do this kind of maneuver here to move around these little pieces here. And the same thing with the outer ones. So um, you can move those in pretty intuitively after the inner pieces of the of the wedges are solved. So if you get these pieces solved here, then these little uh, then these little outer pieces will you can just kind of cycle in pretty easily. And so once you get all of the edges and centers solved, it just reduces to a jinx pyraminx, and you solve it like that. So I'm not going to go through a solve in this video because I just finished solving it. And I don't want to scramble it up immediately again. Uh, but if you guys would like to see a walkthrough solve in the future, uh, or perhaps a tutorial, I might do a full out tutorial for this guy. Uh, then definitely be sure to let me know in the comments if you guys are having trouble with this. So as for the performance of the puzzle throughout the solve, it did pop a few times, but I was being a little bit uh, rough with it. The problem is, is that I don't have a lot of confidence when I'm using this puzzle. It's definitely something that is, uh, you, you have to be super careful with if you want it to not pop. You can't just pick it up off the shelf and move it around real fast um, and, you know, use it relatively roughly and expect it to handle just fine. You're going to have to use a, a fair bit of care with this guy. The turning definitely is kind of grindy. It's pretty rough. It's, uh, the smoothest layers are definitely these outer layers here, you can hear how, you know, how quiet it is, like, you hear how quiet these outer pieces are, especially this tip, compared to these inner layers here, which are, are a bit grindy. I still think it's a great puzzle. I think it was uh, a lot of fun to solve and something that I would definitely solve again. Uh, just not something, you know, you solve very often, but it's definitely looks really impressive. It's a very nice looking puzzle uh, and it'll look really nice in the collection with the rest of the Minx puzzles. So anyways, that's pretty much all I've got to say on the Royal Pyraminx. If you guys would like to purchase this puzzle, the link will be at the top of the description as always. And yeah, that's about it for this unboxing. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. Links to all of my social media pages, my Patreon and my merch store are all linked down in the description below as always. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.